You're very welcome to this webinar jointly organized by TVB and HBB TV. Today is the second part of a mini series dedicated to targeted advertising. And I'm really impressed to see so many of you here, uh, even if it's not a big surprise because we had a historically high number of registrations. Um, this really underlines that the targeted advertising is, a, is of great interest for our industry. So today we'll focus on the implementation side of things, but before I detail the agenda, I would like to first welcome my colleague Jon Krieger on behalf of uh, HBB TV. Jon will co-moderate this webinar with me, uh, which I enjoy very much, by the way. Um, so Jon, um, please turn your camera on and, uh, oh, I can see you now. It's already on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Emily. Um, so you've, uh, you, have come, you have moderated this uh, first part of uh, the webinar, uh, which was rather dedicated uh, on the business opportunities. Could you please give us an outline of what was said during this first part? Yes, thank you, Emily, and welcome from my side to everyone on behalf of HBB TV to this, uh, well, historically high, <laughs> uh, highly uh, interesting webinar uh, with a great number of live views today. So welcome to everyone who's joining us today, whether it's the morning, afternoon or evening, we're live everywhere today. And uh, yes, I'm uh, very um, proud and honored that I've been able to uh, moderate the first session with you about two weeks ago. And uh, Thank you for giving me the opportunity to give a very brief um, update on uh, the or summary on what we talked about. This was part one, the targeted advertising opportunity for free to air broadcasters. We had three presenters there, Sebastian from SmartClip, Arturo from Atres Media and Silvia from Publitalia. So that were three countries covered, Germany, Spain and uh, Italy. And we had use case examples from these three, company, these three uh, companies and markets about cross device ad campaigns, about addressable advertising opportunities on linear TV and on VOD. And um, the outcome was that this way, it creates more reach and awareness for your campaigns at less costs. So I think that was quite interesting to see. And we had a couple of conclusions. Um, and you could say that um, TV advertising needs to become addressable to keep up with web-based targeting solutions. I think that is clear where the classic linear broadcasters um, can find a way to connect to the future of advertising that so far has been restricted uh, to uh, more or less to the big global internet players. We all know them. Second, the market requires standardized products and platforms to stay competitive. And I think that's where today's topic comes in um, with the standards-based solutions for the implementations of targeted advertising. And third, alliances between market players could drive the TA development. And I think there's no better opportunity than using the DVB and HBB TV frameworks for these alliances. Thanks for this, uh, Jorn. And indeed, I'm sure uh, these uh, ad broadcasters understand that they can definitely uh, claim a good, a good piece of this uh, advertising pie and not leave it all to global players. And all the more indeed they collaborate and uh, contribute to the development of standards. So now um, let me introduce the agenda for today and our six speakers uh, representing six different companies uh, who are very active uh, DV members by the way. Um, so you first hear from Nicola Guillot uh, who is product manager at Anensis and Raw Mangil, also product manager, but at the Access Orca. So they will jointly give um, a presentation of the end-to-end uh, -end workflow uh, with the story of France TV as an example. Then you'll hear from Angelo Petazzi, senior uh, strategic manager at uh, Mediaset, who will tell you um, how uh, Mediaset prepared uh, the deployment of a standard-based targeted advertising solution in Italy. Then you'll hear from Joe Winograd, who is a Chief Technology Officer at Verance. Um, Joe will explain how watermarking uh, allows to reach even more viewers. Then we have Pascal Gisekel, who is Global Solutions Architect at Harmonic, and he will say a few words about the steps taken uh, or to be taken to improve the interoperability and how um, a, a future holistic view is uh, valuable. And then finally, we'll have uh, Rufael Mercuria, who is uh, head of research and standardization at Unified Streaming. Uh, Rufael will explain uh, how um, this work mentioned by Pascal is currently underway uh, in DVD. 
So thanks to all of them for their involvement in preparing this uh, webinar. And before leaving the floor, I'd like to remind you that this is a live event. That means that you have the opportunity to ask questions. So to do so, please use the chat box uh, at the bottom of your screen and we'll uh, manage as much as we can uh, at the end of this session uh, during the last uh, 10 or 15 uh, minutes. So with all that said, I would like to invite Nicolas Andro to switch the camera on. And uh, now the floor is yours. Um, Nicolas, let's, uh, let's start. Yes, hi everyone, thank you, Emily. Um, so as an introduction, I just want to give you an overview of uh, how the broadcasters distribute their TV content over the media value chain. Uh, so I'm quite sure everyone here is quite familiar with the architecture, but uh, there are several ways actually to, to broadcast the content. It's not a secret, uh, depending on the distribution network. So uh, obviously terrestrial, satellite and cable uh, are well in place. And the digital distribution based on the internet is uh, really flourishing for several years now. Uh, indeed, as the consumption habits evolve with uh, smartphones, tablets, computers, um, IPTV distribution and OTT platforms are major channels for the providers to, uh, to reach their audience. Um, so the broadcast content are mostly monetized with advertising. So that means that advertising is really a key factor for the broadcasters uh, if they want to keep the control uh, of their revenues. And uh, especially if we look at the global advertising market, um, because the global digital ad spending beat TV for the first time in 2017 and every year after that. And uh, all the projections for the future years uh, confirm this tendency uh, with market shares going from television to digital platforms. In, addi in addition, we have uh, digital actors of the advertising ecosystem, such as Google and Facebook, who monopolize up to 75% of the revenues uh, online with a tremendous amount of money uh, handling uh, hundreds of billions of dollars. Um, so we understand that digital, so IPTV and OTT deliveries um, are, are getting highly monetized. So what happens with broadcast networks? Uh, well, still all studies show that television is the most powerful way to address large audiences. Uh, with a growing daily viewing time of more than three hours and a half in Europe, uh, with a daily reach of 77% of the population, and even more if we look at the weekly reach, who is uh, really close to 100%. And in parallel, uh, slowly but surely, uh, TV is getting more and more connected as well. Um, for example, in France, 36% uh, of the households are effectively, effectively equipped with a connected smart TV which makes around 10 million homes, uh, half of them receiving DVB-T streams, which makes them uh, eligible for HBBTV. Um, and also these numbers could even accelerate uh, with massive sporting events, for example, as the Olympic Games. Um, but of course, the COVID situation uh, tends to, uh, to, to disrupt upcoming predictions. Well, in any case, um, I'm convinced that there is a great story to tell here around the unification of digital and broadcast. And um, we are actually at the turning point of uh, linear TV advertising. And unification is really the key to make the best of uh, broadcast and digital combined. To continue talking about France, uh, I will give you an example, the example uh, of the advertising sales agency of uh, France Television. Um, they were, in fact, one of the first to have tried uh, targeted advertising uh, with HBB TV in France. And they conducted uh, a TA trial. Uh, with TDF and with Anensis as uh, technology providers. And they followed uh, a four steps process uh, described on this slide. Uh, well, first of all, get the consent of the, viewer, of the viewers. Uh, this is the real door opener for the rest of the process um, made according to GDPR. Um, and they made the viewers give their consent with their remote control. Uh, this was really similar to, to cookie pop-up windows we can see on the internet. Uh, then, France Television was able to collect data about the use of people's TV. Um, how do they go through France Television's channels? What shows do they watch? Uh, in addition, advanced information was collected, such as the brand uh, of the TV receiver, uh, the, the user agent of the TV as well, in order to evaluate the potential eligibility for ad spot substitution. 
And from the analysis of this data, uh, they created four segments, depending on the preferences of each TV, uh, finance, health, weather, and family. And then they associated each TV to one of the segments. Uh, and once they, they've done that, finally, they addressed these segments uh, with the four brands included in the trial. Uh, we had the, the sports shop Decathlon for the family segment, uh, the bank BNP uh, for finance, the car repair shop uh, Carglass for weather, and also the pharmaceutical lab uh, Mylan for health. Um, in fact, one spot from the national ad break was substituted with a spot from uh, one of these advertisers on the region uh, targeted. And it was completely seamless for the viewers, but it was uh, actually a great success for France Television. And since uh, then, actually, targeted advertising over linear TV has been made fully legal uh, in France. Uh, and that was in, um, in August uh, of last year. Um, so before going too technical, uh, I will let uh, my colleague uh, Dror from uh, VXSRK uh, present the technical architecture behind the uh, targeted advertising. Thank you, Nicolas, and hello, everyone. So the slide that we are currently presenting, as you can see, it's quite complicated. Okay, and uh, thinking about that, okay, this slide, it's not only for one device, it's for many devices that need to support. So when talking about uh, generally HBB TV and DVB, we think free to air, smart devices but also viewers today are in every device, okay? Uh, broadcasters, in order to support that, okay? You need to serve, uh, to serve the users in any device. It's not only on the, the big screen, it's also on the small screen, in desktop and in other places. Uh, if going forward, looking on the industry and going to the next slide. So looking on what uh, prevents us to scale, to targeted advertising, okay? Uh, it's standards. It's the lack of measurement. It's the fact that today we are not offering the same experience in all platform as it's been done in digital. If thinking about the numbers uh, that Nicola presented in the beginning, that in digital, what we are seeing that uh, almost uh, everything is being shared by the five big giants, this is because the way that the system is working there is unified, it's standardized. It's almost the same experience. So it's led the advertisers to reach their viewers in the same manner, in the same targeting. They always know what to expect. But thinking about the TV and how fragmented it is because of lack of standardization. And if we will see uh, different players uh, adopting different ways to replace that, to signal about the replacement, to do the measurement, to, this, uh, to, to approach the ad servers and to do the request, to request the ad, we get a more fragmented uh, environment. So in order to do that, the first step in order to scale is to adopt standards. And this is exactly where DVB, TA, and HVB TV is coming into place. The second step is to adopt all the tech that today is already supporting those standards as in place in order to have the complete solution in place. Okay, as Nicola presented, we need to collect the consent. We need to collect the data for the targeting. All of that is already available. And those kind of component also need the, uh, the ability to have the standard in place. Then we're going to see scale and add revenue is coming uh, growing for everybody, for the broadcasters that are doing the replacement, and also for operators and other distributors inside of the audience. So if we are going to the next slide, okay? So the image that we, we the viewers is seeing, so the advertisers, what they want is to get all the viewers, all the viewers, they don't want to get some of them. They don't want to get only the, the, the smart TVs don't want to get only the OTTs or the free to We want to get all the viewers the same as is being done in digital. When we adopt the standards, what we were able to see is to change the picture uh, that Nicola presented in the beginning to have the addressable TV. Nicola, if you can point it uh, with your mouse. Okay, the, the graph. 
Okay, so to, to see the addressable TV changing the image for TV, uh, for TV and stopping the stagnation in advertising revenue because we're going to get the premium quality of TV that's going to be in a standard way, getting the same experience cross devices and cross uh, services and seeing the targeting uh, that is being offered in digital also in TV. And this what DVBTA and HBBTV by adopting them will do to the market and will uh, influence the revenue of everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dror, and uh, thank you also, Nicolas. Uh, I think you made it clear that uh, making addressable TV uh, accessible and standardized will uh, generate more revenues for all. So now let's move from France to Italy with Angelo Petati. Um, so Angelo is also the chair of the commercial group in DVB in charge of the targeted advertising. And uh, he's now speaking on behalf of Mediaset, however, and he will tell you about another great story uh, with Mediaset. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Emily. Sharing my screen. Here it is, it should uh, be there, and uh, you probably are going to, we are, you are seeing it. So uh, thank you again, and I'm going to, to give you some uh, brief overview on how Mediaset is approaching uh, TA, uh, as approached, there is uh, approaching the new standard TA in the, in the next, as a next step. Uh, why is not going forward then? Okay, sorry. So, uh, as uh, for for whom of you that didn't uh, attend the last, the first, the first uh, part of the webinar, here is a summary of the uh, uh, items uh, from uh, uh, from which MediaSet is uh, uh, thinking that uh, 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 TA is strategic uh, going forward. As uh, we already, or, or, or always. Uh, uh, thought that standards technology are very, very important for our business. And we leverage the uh, MHP uh, as our major uh, interactive layer, interactive technology. And then in 2014, we decided to switch to HBB TV for a few reasons. And now we have more than 4 million HBB TV to the TV sets that connect to our digital platform every month. This is a huge number. And this is why we uh, decided in 2019 to uh, exploit uh, dynamic ad insertion on uh, HBB TV to the to terminals. Uh, 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 and uh, to do so, we uh, deployed a kind of proprietary solution that was uh, integrated into our legacy playout system to trigger the ad substitution on these terminals. Um, uh, the terminal uh, that run, uh, are running Mediaset Play, that is the, the broadcast related uh, catch up and OTT uh, and video on demand HBB TV application uh, that is signaled on our, uh, all of our Mediaset channel and to make the DAS, uh, they use an integrated uh, uh, client side as substitution module to engine uh, uh, the DAS itself. Uh, but something was, wasn't uh, perfectly good uh, with HBB TV 2.0, HTML, the HTML video element not always uh, uh, was uh, uh, implemented uh, uh, in a good in a good way. The switch time and accuracy was not defined uh, and was uh, really implementation dependent. And no requirement for buffer size, no supported code requirement. So these are uh, issues that we uh, 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 we uh, uh, seen in our uh, devices. Uh, and that, uh, of course, uh, uh, constrained us to 
uh, select uh, a, a well working uh, terminals only to uh, on where we uh, were able to uh, to uh, implement and realize the uh, dance itself but hbbtv and dvbta uh, specification came along and uh, and um, in this case uh, uh, the new standard solution uh, was very good, it was very helpful, uh, that allows us to uh, put in place uh, uh, in our EDAN, in our playout system, a completely compliant uh, signaling solution uh, compliant with the DVBTA part one specification. We started a strong collaboration with some CENs. Uh, to implement HBBTVTA on our on the terminals, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, oh, the, the dialogue that we are using with uh, HBBTV 2.0 uh, 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 devices uh, uh, is already is was already uh, compliant with DVBTA uh, uh, guidelines that are the DVBTA Part Two specification. Uh, this was uh, absolutely uh, good uh, because uh, we uh, are able now, very soon, based on the new TA specification, we will be able to launch new services for our other, other clients, other investors, and uh, uh, this is going to enabling uh, to enable a, a compelling viewer experience. Uh, uh, with uh, uh, various use cases enabled, uh, starting of course with the single ad substitution to multiple substitution in the same ad break, and even on adjacent ads substitution is is possible with the new uh, TA uh, specification. Uh, that's that's all uh, for me. Just uh, if you would like to have. A more detailed information on about that, I would suggest you to have a look into the Stefano Baragheri article on DVB saying uh, the issue number uh, 57 uh, about the target advertising from specification to implementation and title like that. And this uh, is uh, there with more and more detailed uh, technical stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Angelo. I'm trying to turn on my video. Okay, now it's okay. Um, so thanks. It was very good. Uh, it was a compelling demonstration of uh, how the new uh, system, uh, which is based on standardized solution instead of uh, proprietary ones, how this enable uh, a more reliable uh, and a more um, solutions with more use cases available. So thank you for that. And uh, now we have Joe Winograd from Perrance, who will tell us about uh, the latest features added in the DVB specification known as the watermark watermarking. Um, so Joe will show how it's um, be used together with the latest HDBTV specification, which is planned to be published very soon. Um, so Joe, welcome, and now over to you. Hi, Emily, and uh, hello to everybody. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to talk about in a little more detail some of the specific use cases that DVB has sought to address in our targeted advertising work. And in particular, uh, one of the important new technologies uh, we've introduced most recently into the specifications, which is watermarking and some of the uh, particular use cases that drove our interest in this technology. So, first, I'll, I'll describe um, a couple of the use cases uh, that the DVBTA spec currently addresses. The first, which I'm uh, illustrating here on the screen, is uh, coordination between broadcasters. The DVBTA spec enables uh, signaling delivered by broadcasters to operators who can uh, receive that ad signaling information and respond to it in equipment that is designed to recognize this TA signaling. And so we have here, uh, coming from the top of the diagram, uh, a broadcast, which is the main content shown in gray, uh, DVBTA signaling shown as, an, as uh, information accompanying that with the blue line. And what a, a, a pay TV operator can do is take that information, and if they have set-top boxes that are 
uh, capable of doing targeted advertising. They can either um, integrate technology that responds to that TA signaling directly or translate it into a format that a, a traditional TA system uh, can handle. So that's the first use case. The second use case that DVB-TA uh, addresses and enables with this same signaling is to be able to carry the signaling over uh, terrestrial or satellite broadcast transmission to households that can receive that signaling. Uh, and then the HVB TV companion specification for targeted advertising um, provides a mechanism for receiving that signal, signaling uh, and having a uh, HVB TV application under broadcaster control receive that signaling as stream events and coordinate with broadband services to access and present targeted advertising based on that same signaling over broadcast. The next case that the DVB turned to is a case that uh, uh, exists in many markets, which is where you have operators that are, are receiving the same broadcast service, but transmitting it uh, through their equipment to set top boxes that are not capable or um, don't uh, receive that signaling and are not uh, enabled with targeted advertising capabilities. And in this case, what often uh, will happen is the signaling messages that DVB uh, broadcasters are transmitting are not delivered uh, to the uh, receiver set. So what, uh, and are not capable even for a television that has the HBB TV targeted advertising capability, um, aren't going to receive the signaling and, and won't be able to launch TA services. So we've introduced uh, into a, a recent uh, revision of the DVB TA specification, um, a guideline for carriage of this DVB TA signaling via watermarking, where the signaling messaging that announces um, both information about the uh, targeted advertising opportunities, as well as information that can be used to discover and launch the HBB TV application that controls the DAS experience uh, are carried, this signaling is carried directly within the media essence inside the video and audio through the use of watermarking technology. And that information can pass directly through non-participating operator equipment and even across an HDMI connection from a set-top box to an HBB TV uh, television where that watermark uh, can be recognized, responded to, enabling the launch of a HBB TV DAS application. Uh, and then that DAS application can receive also via watermarking that signaling. So this is the uh, uh, third and, and new use case that, uh, that the HBB TV spec enables via watermarking and an important one. The work was motivated initially by a, a market study um, conducted uh, by DVB among its membership, bringing information from various markets, where we found that there were substantial segments of population uh, who, absent this type of watermarking solution, would be unable to receive uh, targeted advertising signaling. And so, the, uh, as uh, mentioned in the early part of our presentation, achieving scale is critical. We, we didn't want to leave these important segments of the market where uh, non-participating operator equipment sat between the broadcaster and the viewer uh, to hamper the growth of this opportunity for broadcasters. I'll talk a little bit briefly about the um, implementation architecture that's, uh, that's used in the, in the watermarking uh, use case. So we start here with a, a diagram that shows basically the overall architecture of the broadcaster plant with the gray background, the signal, which is a DVB transport stream carrying a watermark being delivered to an intermediate operator who uh, passes through via HDMI from their equipment to a, a HBB TV capable receiver uh, that can run the broadcaster's DAS app. And the way that the... Um, DVB-TA signaling is introduced is through a technology that has uh, been around for a while, so is readily available, which is called a VANC injector. And this is uh, something that's traditionally been used for targeted advertising to take information coming out of the automation system about when ad breaks are occurring and translating that into 
uh, the SDI stream that passes through the broadcaster's plant. And so this device, the VANC injector, can generate TA signaling, uh, transmit it between devices in the broadcast plant. Uh, the new piece of equipment introduced to enable watermarking at the broadcast plant is this watermark embedder, which generates watermark signaling into the video and audio essence prior to encoding of the content. And it's reading this in, uh, signaling information and translating it into uh, watermark messaging that will pass through the operator environment. Uh, that same uh, DVBTA signaling that's uh, introduced by the bank injector may be used if a broadcaster is also doing a traditional TA signaling uh, by uh, uh, the encoder multiplexer. And that uh, um, will allow an oper uh, a broadcaster who's trying to deliver a signal through either multiple operators or through operators that have very diverse um, uh, footprints of, of devices to actually use the uh, address the multiple use cases described on the prior slides in tandem and together. So the, the um, watermark technology passes through the operator environment, can be detected by the receiver, uh, launch and synchronize the DAS app, recover um, the uh, TA signaling, and then the DAS app works in conjunction with some broadband application servers, of course, to do uh, both acquiring additional TA signaling, um, to acquire uh, targeting information, um, download and access um, replaceable ad assets, uh, and enable measurement. All of that is performed by the DAS app based on the HPB TV companion standard. So uh, the, the underlying technologies that are used include both audio and watermark, audio and video watermarking used in tandem that are, are compatible with any distribution environment. Um, and uh, the um, uh, underlying standards that support this, it's the entire system's based on openly specified technologies. Just a, a quick walkthrough. I, I won't go into this in detail, but you see here links uh, that will be available in the slides after the meeting to the various specific standards that govern the underlying behavior, which include uh, the signaling issuance in a DVB Blue Book published early this year, um, the uh, application discovery capabilities and the targeted advertising interfaces for the DAS app are specified in two Etsy standards prepared by the HBB TV group. Uh, HBB TV has been working in partnership with DVB to uh, integrate these two standards, the uh, application discovery standard that introduces watermarking to the HBB TV ecosystem and the targeted advertising standard to have a, 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 a new updated version of the um, application discovery standard from HBB TV that will uh, give guidelines to terminal manufacturers, TV manufacturers to use these two technologies in tandem with some updates for the TA environment. That'll be coming out um, just in the next few months. It's being ready for publication by HBB TV. Uh, and then the, uh, the watermark technology that um, HBB TV is, is using is uh, developed in the States, um, openly specified by ATSC as part of their next generation television ecosystem. Uh, and, and they have specified the audio and video signaling, uh, the, the physical layers for the watermark uh, emission and reception, and then some of the network protocols for using that watermark to, to bootstrap uh, application and signaling services. That concludes my portion and I'm happy to answer questions um, at the Q&A portion of the presentation. Thank you, Drew, very much uh, for your presentation and uh, still struggling to turn off on my video. <laughs> Just waiting for the host to allow me. Okay, let's do without. Um, so yes, I'm. Yeah, it's very nice to to hear that um, this uh, those latest additions uh, and specifications uh, are uh, yeah good steps towards um, a good use of the hybrid network because uh, we are now able to so we enable a TV set connected to to a legacy set top box to insert a spot received from its broadband connection. So I think it's a very good um, good step. So now uh, let's welcome Pascal Gézekel, who will say a few words uh, about the steps taken uh, to improve the interoperability across all platforms. 
um, and about this holistic vision, which is uh, really important. So, Jessica, uh, so Pascal, the, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Emily. So, we we'll share my screen. Oops. Ah, okay. So, oh, yeah, um, I think the, at the beginning, uh, Nicolas said exactly the same. So uh, dynamic and insertion now is a reality. Uh, it's an explosive growth. Uh, so advertisers want DI. Uh, DI, it's targeted advertisement. Uh, it's the same two words for the same thing. Uh, it's true for now quite all regions. And most important, uh, DAI needs to be global. DAI, it's not by silo. We don't need a DAI for OTT, another one for IPTV, and a third one for, for DTT. Um, so yeah, so we need something more global. It's not, definitely it's not by silo. Okay, so. For DAI and targeted advertisement, there are several architectures and two main architectures, uh, server side that fits more for, I would say, OTT, client side that fits more for, for, for retail TV on DTT. Um, okay, that, that technologies or such architectures are not competing each other. Uh, both make sense. Uh, both can be deployed. Um, Okay, but um, the challenges needs to be addressed in, 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 in both cases, server side or client side or any architecture. And I think the challenges, and Jeno um, mentioned that, uh, we need fine timings. Um, the timing needs to be perfect. We need frame accuracy. Uh, we need smooth transition when we switch from live to ad, when we switch from broadcast to broadband, when we switch from broadcast to a preloaded ad, well, we need smooth transitions and we need a consistent video quality. Basically, the, the ad video quality cannot differ from the live channel video quality. Uh, and again, it's, 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 it's important to have a global solution, not to have different solutions that do not interpret. Uh, I don't want a solution for OTT, another one for DTT that, that cannot work together. Again, uh, advertisers want to sell their ads, whatever the delivery platform is. They don't care, basically. They need not to care. They need to sell. Uh, so I would say a global view, and, and perhaps I can say a, a holistic view of, of target advertisement is really required. And basically, now, and, and, and thanks the BV for that, because that holistic view is taking shape. First, DVBTA and HBBTVTA solutions, it's obviously a very good start. The initial focus was broadcast and, and DVBTA enables the insertion of ad received over broadband to a, a TV connected to broadcast. And it's very important, DVBTA extend to address services delivered over broadband. And I think my colleague Rafael, my colleague, my, my friend Rafael will, 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 will give some more details about that. But with DVBI, for example, there is a good way to extend uh, that standard to uh, broadcast, broadband, OTT, whatever the delivery method. Also, uh, as Joe said, it can be set-top box, it can be retail TV, it can be legacy set-top box. Um, there are a lot of technologies that, 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 that enables the DBTA across all delivery plat platforms. So it's really, it's really crucial. It's really a need. TA needs to be unified across all platforms. But well, when I mean unified, 
I don't think about a global solution that uh, a big solution to rule them all. Uh, uh, it, it, it's more, we need solution focused to each derivative platform that can, that can interoperate each other. Um, and I think a, a, a first important step for that is to get a, cons a, a consistent signaling across all platforms. And this is, I guess, the must have. So it's obvious targeted advertising will benefit from standard. Uh, and we, it, it's, totally, it's totally crucial to move from proprietary silos uh, to global interoperable solution, especially now when there are some hybrid networks and there, there are some hybrid uh, solution. Uh, you see what, what I mean. Uh, people does not watch TV only on DTT or only on OTT. It's on every network. Okay, so uh, a few words about signaling. And uh, again, uh, Rufael will, will, will give you some more details. Uh, so DVBTA leverage uh, on SCUTI 35 sig signaling. And there are a couple of challenges. Um, the standard is pretty old, based on several layers, uh, with multiple custom implementation, with a lot of legacy elements inside uh, the standard, um, some kind of lack of flexibility of deploy system because of legacy, because of the multiple uh, versions of the standard. So what is being done? by DVB, but not only by DVB, HBD TV, MPEG, and so on. Um, it's, it's to work to get a consistent signaling across all platforms, uh, to get clear guidelines. And um, OK, so uh, Rufael will, will, will tell more about that. So we get some liaisons with SCTE organization to discuss several things. and. Um, and, and it is really important. And, and, and I think, yeah, we, we are moving to something really more consistent. So let's conclude with some key take, takeaways. First, DVB-TA and powered TA for broadcast. This is nice. This is, uh, well, uh, very good and extends uh, to broadband. So extends to a global system. For sure, it, it, it's so obvious, but, but, but TA will benefit from interoperability for all platforms. Again, as I was saying before, advertisers want to sell their ads. They don't care about the platform. Consistent signaling is a must have. Uh, it's, it's too complex to get one signaling platform, one signaling for, 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 for one platform, another one for another one. Uh, yeah, we, we, we really need something really consistent. And, and it's quite interesting because that, that, that final takeaway is one of the conclusion of the first uh, webinar. I think the industry, our industry agrees now that TA need a cross-industry collaboration. Um, it, it was obvious from the, the feedback we received from the first, uh, from the first uh, web, webinar, we need a cross-industry collaboration. Uh, and I think uh, DVB, HBB TV, and so on is, is quite a place to be to, to do some, such uh, cross-industry collaboration. So that's it on my side. Thank you for your, for your attention. And I leave the floor to um, Rufael. So th thank you very much, uh, Pascal, and I really like your, your conclusion indeed. And uh, this is a very good uh, introduction to our last presentation from Rufael. So Rufael uh, Mekuria from Unified Streaming is also the chair of the DVB group in charge of the DVB dash specification. This is why he's the right person to tell you about uh, what's being done currently to achieve this consistency uh, that Pascal mentioned uh, across the various platforms, uh, mainly in terms of signaling. So um, he will now, uh, yeah, please uh, go ahead, um, Rufai. 
Yeah, thank you, uh, Emily and uh, Pascal. So I think, yeah, we have seen a, a lot uh, today about uh, the business case of uh, targeted ad insertion and the work um, that is going on. So I want to provide some more uh, detailed information on the um, standardization work that, that is uh, going on. So I hope everyone can see my screen properly. Um, so I'm really going to make, make a summary of, of what DVB will bring. So I went Unified Streaming, which is a small company in Amsterdam, but we provide some technologies to different um, um, broadcasters uh, for, for streaming. And I also work in, in the TM Stream Group, which maintains the DVB dash uh, specification. So I'm just going to give you some insights in this ongoing work. So recently, uh, DVB members have looked at the opportunity, as was mentioned in previous talk, of targeted advertisement after completing the DVBTA specification for um, targeted advertising, where the main content is a is a broad uh, a broadcast signal. So in these new requirements, we looked at what if it, the main content is a is a DVB dash or a dash signal. So basically a, a broadband uh, signal. So there was a lot of discussion on that, a lot of uh, companies involved, and there was a, developed some commercial requirements that included server side ad insertion. So for this case, server side ad insertion is also common. So we will work on, on specifications to improve that. Uh, and then there are also some some requirements on the reporting and identification. Uh, and uh, very important, as, as Pascal mentioned, the, the signaling of ad breaks in this context. So streaming works a little bit different than, um, than broadcast. So there are some, the signaling is also slightly uh, different. Then the second sort of big topic is DVB dash itself. So there, um, yeah, that is a, a profile basically that, that broadcasters can use to optimize their dash delivery to different um, devices such as uh, televisions uh, and so on. Um, and this specification is publicly available. So this is very uh, 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 nice specification to see how to prepare your content and how to deliver your content to, to DVB uh, devices. And then last, as DVB is a standards group, it can also help in collaborating with other um, industry fora or standardization organizations. And that's in this case, as Pascal already mentioned, it's, it's very important. So I'm also going to talk a little bit how, how that is done and give some examples of that. So, the, just to give you an introduction, which Pascal already to some extent, so SCOTI 35 is, is a most popular kind of standard to signal advertisement slots and it's well known with, with broadcasters for, for broadcast. It was especially popular in the United States, but it's also adopted well around Europe. Uh, but from our investigation, we found that still some open issues exist when using SCOTI 35 in DASH and similar as in the DVBTA. The SCOTI 35 is a very broad toolbox, so some profiling is needed. So in these, in both aspects, I think DVB is playing a proactive role. Uh, and in doing so, there is a liaison set up with, uh, with SCOTI DVS working group that is developing the SCOTI 35 specification. So if you are a DVB member, you can uh, join uh, uh, discussions with Scotty uh, on, on these topics. So we're basically having regular uh, monthly meetings to address some of these issues, uh, such as, uh, you know, the Scotty 35 signaling was really developed for MPEG-2 transport streams. So some of the fields in Scotty 35 don't really apply to DASH. Some of the uh, signaling in DASH is different. So, so all that uh, was not very clear in, in, in Scotty's original specifications. But currently, we made a, an alignment with them, and we are jointly working until the end of 2021 to, to resolve um, many of these issues. So Scotty will publish uh, an updated specification on this, and we may have some updates to, to DVB-for uh, this signaling part. 
Um, then the second important part is the encoding and packaging with DVB dash. So this is um, very important if you want to, to have a good interoperability with devices and support like the latest audio, video and, and time text codecs that, that is relevant for uh, broadcasters. So what DVB dash also provides is some additional, uh, well, some of it is already there, but uh, what part of the, the technical work is also to provide guidelines for encoding and packaging of ad content. So basically, if you go from a main content to an ad content, some of the content properties may change. So what we are looking at is to provide some, some guidelines on how to achieve the smooth, smooth transitions uh, between, between the main and the ad content. Uh, this also includes some guidelines for the player behavior as well. Um, and then again, I would like to, to mention that the DVB dash is publicly available and this work is still ongoing and it's expected that there will be an update around the end of this year that includes uh, some additional uh, provisioning for, for the ad, ad insertion uh, content packaging. And then if you're more interested in how to do packaging for DVB dash and DVBI, there is also a masterclass uh, presentation available that we gave last year. So there you can find some more background on how DVB dash can, can help you with that. Then another important item that I like to emphasize that even for, for, for smaller broadcasters or for companies with limited resources via DVB, you can collaborate with other industry fora or standardization organization that, that we work with. So one example is the, the CMAF uh, format. This is an ISO standard that was developed by NPEG and DVB was also uh, involved uh, with that. And this is currently also used for encoding ad content and also for target, uh, for your, if you want to target uh, mobile devices, you can use this, this, this track format. Another example is the Dash Industry Forum. Uh, one other example is using DVB Dash with the Dash Live Ingest Media Protocol, where you can basically achieve interoperability between different encoders and your origins or CDN. So this is a, a common problem for, for broadcasters to achieve that. And the good thing of this protocol is that there is also support for uh, SCOTI 35 and redundancy and failover that will allow you to compete with the, with the bigger uh, streaming uh, giants uh, from uh, the, across the Atlantic. Uh, and then we have some other potential targets like the IAB, SVA to address some of the new requirements for uh, reporting and, and identification. So I want to thank you very much uh, for your attendance and uh, it was great to see all these uh, presentations and yeah, I hope to see if there are any questions. Thank you very much to you also, uh, Rufael, and this is indeed a huge work uh, being undertaken. Um, so now it's time for questions. Uh, we have uh, slightly less than 10 minutes, 10 minutes left. I would like all the speakers to turn on their camera. Um, Jorn, uh, I think you've seen quite interesting questions in the question box. Yes, uh, uh, thank you. Would you like to start with one? Yes, let's start. Um, you have uh, made use of the function to um, rate the questions so we can see which ones are the most interesting from the audience's view. And there's one that's right on top uh, regarding the first presentation by Nicolas. It was on the French market. So the question is, how did France TV manage to test HBB TV TA? Was it a lab test? On which platform did France TV test TA? Nicolas. Yeah, well, in fact, um, it was an HPB TV trial with targeted advertising. So it was conducted uh, as a live experiment on a limited number of TV receivers. Um, but they did not use HPB TV TA specifically um, because of the availability uh, on the TV um, receivers. But um, for the deployment, they are very likely to use it uh, when they would go, uh, go live, actually. Thank you. Thank you very much also. Um, we have a question maybe now for uh, Angelo. Uh, how, um, or oh, I had another one here. Uh, how will Mediaset ensure that the manufacturers, uh, so the ODM manufacturers benefits uh, thanks to their investment uh, in the HPV TV TA uh, specification in their products? Yes, thank you. Um, very good question. I think uh, that I can answer saying that uh, the implementation of uh, HBV TVTA specification is uh, uh, that are the new one 
uh, together with the DVBTA that regards, uh, of course, the seniorization uh, for uh, uh, the HBBTV, then for the terminals, uh, we are going to have uh, an agreement uh, with, uh, uh, with the manufacturers. And uh, this is something that uh, is quite uh, new, but is, uh, is, uh, is uh, has to be done in this way. Uh, and uh, in, uh, in the agreement, in the discussion uh, uh, with uh, them, uh, you can have, of course, and you are going to agree with them to uh, some kind of uh, uh, of uh, 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 invest return of the, the investment of the of the manufacturer itself. Thank you very much. I think I'll stay with you, Angelo, for a moment because there's been a question regarding the availability of HBB TV TA, the specification for TA in the HBB TV firmware. So I think it's meant here the core HBB TV standard uh, that it's not part of that. Can you elaborate on that? What, where is HBB TV TA actually? Um, uh, I, I'm, I, I don't know what to use. Uh, uh, what this uh, this question is uh, asking regarding is, is related with uh, regard to HBB TV channels. Uh, so HBB TV uh, TA is of course a specification that has been developed by the uh, HBB TV Association, and of course they are for the HBB TV terminals only. Uh, in general, the DVB TA specification. Uh, on the contrary, is uh, is a way of signaling uh, uh, the, the placement the placement opportunity for TA for for a substitution of ads that could be uh, uh, used by any kind of uh, terminals if they like to use and to to implement that. Okay, so the devices need to be HVB TV compliant to be able to deal with TA, but are they automatically able to deal with TA or do they need a certain specification that's let's say HBB TV 203 or something like that? Yeah, for, to, for, for I'd like to clarify that. So the, uh, as I said in my presentation, the DVB, uh, the HBB, the HBB TV 2.0 are the, the core specification. And in, with that specification, TA is possible, but with the uh, the constraint and the limitation I, I said during my, my presentation. So the implementation of the uh, switching time, there are no uh, good, good uh, there are no constraint or, or definition of that. So the next level, the, the following level are the HBB TVTA. And with uh, this new specification, you are managing to achieve a, a very, a very uh, precise, accurate and uh, and uh, in terms of accuracy of the switching time between the, the, the broadcast and the broadband and vice versa. So it is, uh, uh, as I said, it is something that is uh, uh, compliant with profile two of uh, the specification uh, 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 that enables uh, a good uh, 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 accuracy of the, of the switching time and they support the replacing of ads even in the middle of the uh, an ad break. Yeah. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Angelo. Uh, maybe now a question for Joe. Um, so Ian is asking: Is there any chance or are there any threat that operators uh, filter variance audio or video watermark, uh, which would make the solution uh, inefficient? Yes, thank you. It's an excellent question. Yes, we can hear you, Joe. Thank you. I got a message. Uh, the the um, look. The business of DVB is uh, to enable create standards that enable cooperation between broadcasters, operators, and television uh, receiver makers. Uh, our business is not to force uh, policies or uh, regulations or or uh, contractual agreements onto any party. The watermark uh, purpose is to enable uh, messaging to pass through non-participating equipment, not to force messaging to pass through some uh, unwilling party. So um, the watermarks uh, are removable when necessary and if needed. There are multiple, many legitimate use cases where that's necessary. In fact, there are um, in some of the referenced 
uh, organizations recommended practices on the behavior of doing so. But uh, the importance of the technology, uh, I think, for, for broadcasters and operators is that it will enable uh, operators who have equipment that is uh, not currently capable of performing targeted advertising insertion or carrying targeted advertising signaling uh, to avoid having to invest in expensive upgrades and equipment rollouts to be able to participate or to have services that they carry participate in this ecosystem. But uh, regulation and contracts and business agreements between the various parties are intended to um, affirm and, and uh, impose requirements, not, uh, not voluntary standards. Okay, thank you, Joe. This is uh, reassuring. Uh, maybe, Jon, do you have a, maybe a last question we could deal with? Yes, another question um, that is uh, asking, could you tell us more about the process having TV manufacturers to implement DVB and HPB TV TA specifications? Have all agreed to adopt it? What's the percentage of TA enabled devices? So we're talking about market penetration and the way to get those specifications into the hardware. Who would like to respond? I can try. Angelo, thank you. Yeah, so uh, it is uh, a very, very good question and, and it's not easy to, to, to answer. Uh, it's uh, it, the new specification uh, are new, quite new. Uh, uh, people, uh, I think broadcasters and manufacturers are in this uh, uh, real moment uh, discussing uh, how to, uh, to implement uh, that. We are doing for Mediaset, uh, we are in touch with a couple of, uh, of them and we are uh, discussing with them for uh, how to implement at best. The specification is a long dialogue that has to be done with them uh, and uh, it it's require uh, uh, an effort from for, for everyone, for the broadcaster and from uh, for the manufacturers in order to uh, make it happen. So it is as, you, as usual, as always, uh, is a question of uh, uh, a relation between the two parties, the parties involved, uh, and uh, uh, this is, uh, but in this case, uh, there is something uh, uh, that is not on a voluntary basis, uh, but it is something that has to be nailed down by a, an agreement with, with an agreement between the manufacturer and the broadcaster. Thank you. It's a very good uh, conclusion. Thank you, Angelo. And I think it's now time to close this session. Um, remember that the video and the slides will be on both uh, HBB TV and DVB websites. So it's now time to thank you, to thank all the speakers and uh, thank the audience for your great interest. Thank you, bye. Thank you. See you next thank time. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.